It, it was hard. It was very difficult. Being in the infantry is hard enough the way it is. But I was living the Army values, and part of that requires putting the organization ahead of your personal interests, and that's exactly what I did. As an infantry company commander, I knew the importance of taking care of my soldiers and making life the easiest I possibly could for them. And I often look back at it and wonder how much better a person, an NCO, and an officer I could have been had I been allowed to transition and be authentic while serving. Did other men have any idea or treat you differently those 34 years? Um, I think, again, I think you asked me if, if I was treated any differently. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Sorry about the technology lackluster at the moment, but yes. <laughs> uh, no problem. Um, I don't think I would have been treated any differently or I was treated any differently. Uh, I had deeply suppressed this for decades in order to be the best person I could at my job. Uh, as we mentioned, the Army Infantry doesn't yet allow women, but tomorrow at this Pentagon Pride event, you'll be wearing uh, a female Army service uniform with, with your infantry cro gold cross rifle insignia. No one has ever done that before. Correct. Um, this is unique. Um, and, and the reason for that being is that the Army has only just begun changing gender markers on discharge certificates. So I received an updated DD-214 a couple of months ago uh, that reads Sherry Swakowski, Colonel Infantry. So I will this year, instead of wearing a civilian business suit to pride like I did last year, I will be in uniform and it will be um, appropriate as a female uniform uh, to align with my gender and it will be displaying the infantry insignia and colors. But for us civilians, Sherry, can you just really explain the significance of a uniform? Oh, gosh. Uh, a uniform is, is really what it's all about. It's the embodiment of, of the organization, of the person, of the team, of the Army. Uh, it's, it's such a proud thing. Uh, folks who have served in uniform for as many years as I have uh, often look for opportunities to wear their uniform at special events during retirement. And for the last 10 years, I couldn't do that, but now I can. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about current policy. I know just last Thursday, the Air Force announced um, policy changes that will make it more difficult to discharge uh, transgender troops, a uh, move that mirrors what happened uh, in the Army in March. Um, when do you think trans men and women will be able to serve openly? Well, I hope extremely soon. I, I think the DOD leadership really wants the department to be an equal opportunity employer, and I applaud the inroads that have been made by both the Air Force and the Army, but the policy is being applied inconsistently across the services. So we need some standardization, we need clarification of the current policy, and we need to, you know, put an end to the, um, the, the turmoil that we're going through because of the 15,000 plus transgender soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen. Uh, a final question, you know, I had read that you had hoped to transition and just blend into society, but you're here on, you know, CNN having a national conversation <laughs> with me. This is, um, not exactly blending, Sherry. Why, why did you choose to become such an advocate? Uh, good question. Uh, there was an event that happened that was I transitioned and, um, seven, eight years ago and was immediately fired from my job as a government contractor, as a lead instructor at the Army's Force Management School at Fort Belvoir, and subsequently went on to serve two and a half years in the, in the Pentagon which a uh, beautiful environment, an environment that many people would think was uh, very conservative, but my experience there was very professional. It was, not, it was entirely positive. Mm -hmm. We can do that on the civilian side. We can do that on the military side as well.